the future of Paris. I'm joined um, with um, Frank Hahn, the CEO of Rave Space. And um, by Kalam, he is the founder uh, in X space. In, of InX Space. And to, to kick this off, I would uh, really like you to introduce what you are doing. Okay. You both uh, about future virtual parties and to, to give everybody a grasp on uh, what you're doing and what, um, yeah, what you're all about. Do you want to go first? Or? Oh, okay. Uh, Frank, you can actually take off your mask so we can see. Ah, okay, uh, so I think this is uh, quite good. And, and you oh. lost your uh, microphone. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Wonderful. So, <coughs> hello. Very welcome. I'm Frank. Uh, I'm 46 and um, I am in the music industry quite all my life. I've been working for several companies, more on the um, equipment and um, technology side of things. I used to work for, just to name some companies, uh, Vestax, uh, Cork, uh, Stanton, KRK, uh, and uh, recently, or not recently, but uh, uh, lastly for InMusic. Um, they are, uh, have a um, lot of um, interesting brands like Denon DJ and Arkai and um, uh, Rain. And that was also my position here in Berlin. Um, um, I was working there um, as a business development manager and artist relations manager because they had this um, crazy um, new technology and gear and I was supposed to um, get this gear to the artists. So I've had uh, lots of contact to artists. And... Um, and I realized in this position, and I did um, quite a lot of marketing initiatives like live streams and all that kind of stuff, um, because also it was then uh, uh, pandemic times. And I realized um, it, do it do didn't matter what, what kind of um, live stream initiatives I've done, like I did the crazy backdrops, like crazy stuff, and it, but the engagement was um, very little. So I thought, what could be next? What could be the next step <coughs> uh, to get uh, to present something that um, is more, um, the, you know, what you got to have a, a better experience to, to um, and more engagement, of course, um, because that's exactly what I realized. Like um, we did like live streams with big lineups and big um, people in, in a crazy setup, and literally the people have been in um, the experience two minutes and then they are away. And also, of course, um, during that time, it was not clear um, how the future will be in pandemic times. I mean, um, so I thought, what could be next? What could be next? And then, um, um, coincidentally, <laughs> I found um, my uh, co-founders, which is Fabian and Tom. They are not here today, but um, they are um, very sophisticated developers and also um, have the kind of the same background like me, um, being in the music industry. I'm DJ by myself. I'm producing music, and they also run a label. And and um, just a funny side story. I don't want to overdo it, but um, I was uh, looking for a VR class for um, to play in Half Life, um, which um, just really they just released uh, Half Life Alex, which is a crazy VR game. And um, yeah, uh, I didn't want to spend like a thousand bucks, so I um, looked it up at eBay Kleinanzeigen, and that's how I met these guys. <laughs> because I was like, hey, what are you doing? Are you also a um, um, gamer? And they were, no, we are a developer. And uh, oh, here we go. And um, that's basically the story be behind Rave Space. We found that company. Um, first of all, it was not a fun project. It was, I mean, we, we, we meant it serious, but we thought about. Um, um, creating um, a virtual party environment which is easy accessible um, by um, your browser and um, but have um, like the same experiences um, possible like you have in a, in a club night and um, yeah so um, that's what we are basically doing rave space I mean rave space is um, it's a little bit more than that, the company itself, because we, because of the technology we're using, we can go in detail later. Um, we also do um, a lot of other projects um, in um, relation to art experiences, museums, stuff like that. But RevSpace is, of course, still our baby, and um, I strongly believe um, that the future of partying is hybrid. Um, I think we go in detail later on. But that's... Um, f uh, I, I'm going to show you the rave space and more in detail, but, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Sorry, I was a bit of it. Hello, everyone. Kalam from um, Inex Space. I'm the founder of this company. We do virtual shows 
Yeah. It was just funny when you when you mentioned uh, the you, you told everyone how old you are. When <laughs> I was coming in here this morning, um, my partner just it's laughed. Like, I wait a second. It's I think no your your microphone isn't. Yeah. Um, the audio levels. Can you all hear me? <laughs> yeah, probably if they record, it's Thank better to turn it on. In it, so okay. it would be hello, hello, hello. nice to hear you, actually. Yeah, yeah. Am I coming through? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Hello again, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just saying when, when I was coming here uh, just now, was my partner, she was dropping me off, and, and and she asked me what this this panel is about. And I said the future of partying, and she started cracking up. She started laughing. She's like, they're asking like a. a Forty-year-old guy, what the future of partying is? <laughs> of course, there's a lot of love in this relationship, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, but it's funny, you know. We're we um, in Space is a company I founded with um, artists and people who create uh, shows with mixed reality, use Unreal Engine, game developers, designers, music producers, and um, we're creating immersive shows with uh, people joining as avatars, and it's all a bit abstract. When if I would describe it here, I think. The guys yeah. have a video. You can just play that while it mutes it, but it gives you an idea of, of uh, the sort of things we're, we're doing. You know, this stuff came together because I, I was uh, working in, um, in a company called Native Instruments a few years ago, and I was um, leading the conversations we were having with innovators, people creating um, tech for music production and performance, and innovators, startups, inventors, companies like yours. and. And it was uh, always super interesting to see what they're building um, from a startup perspective. But when it comes to my peer group, we're all uh, musicians and performers inside the company, coders, musicians, performers. And there's always, I always felt there's always this gap between what startups were building and what the actual people who would be using their products were, were thinking. And uh, when I left there at the start of 2019, I wanted to get closer to artists and see how they would use these technology stacks like machine learning, AI, and mixed reality. That those things were the things that just excited me and I just decided to just dive deep into it. And, um, and in the process of doing that, I was reflecting on all the companies I met along the way. One of them was the Wave VR. So they had a, they had a really cool studio set up in LA where they put people in motion capture and then they made them, turn them into avatars, put them in a virtual space and then you could watch the shows. Before they did that, they had VR shows and that was building on a, on, a, on a very niche subculture of people with headsets yeah. doing part raves inside those headsets. And, and, um, and, and I got immersed in that world and got lost in all that. And of course, when you try and explain this stuff to, to a company, it's like, this could be the future. This is something we should be investing in. They're all like, how many headsets are there in the world? This is not a market. But They but changed from waves, VR in Wave 6R, I guess, right? That was, yeah, so, so yeah. I, I mean, remember there, that one. The, the thing that I, I feel like, uh, without just going into too much detail, because I know we sh we're, we've got a, a, sh a quick cutoff at 1.30. One, at, uh, <laughs> um, you know, for me, there's, with everything that's exciting about clubbing, there's a subculture. You go into, you go into any of the clubs in Berlin, and there's a long history, there's a long buildup. Of, of how these things came about. You look at the companies in Berlin, like Ableton and Native Instruments. They're, what, tw Native is like 20 years old? It's like, these companies are ancient in the startup world, you know? It's just like, yeah. they, but they've, they've been building products for a very long time. And, and the, the ideas for those products, the people who work in these places are music producers, are DJs, are creatives. They, they are influencing how these things are built. And those influences are coming from a broader subculture in, in the city of Berlin and globally around clubbing. And, uh, and clubbing for me is just uh, <coughs> something that happens in, in real life. It's, you cannot really replace that experience. But uh, we were curious about what we could do to create something new online, to really create that energy that you experience in a club, but in a totally new way. Because online, you've got a lot more flexibility. You can shoot lasers from your fingers. You can, you can, you can, depending, you can, you can fly through a space. Depending on my state in the club, yeah. I can do that as well. Yeah, and, and you know, we can, we, we have a lot of artists we work with who use machine learning and audio and visuals, and we could bring all that into this space. We could even sell that as, you know, NFTs and, and um, create like communities around this subculture, this niche. And, and so that's the thing we're, we're really curious about. Like, can we do that? And, and, and that's how we started, and then the pandemic hit, and, um, and, um, and then a, a, a couple of artists from, from Berlin called, called Panpot reached out to us and said, hey, really interested in like, building out these online shows, and we started talking, and then 
A year and a half later, we're, we've got a company, we've got some shows we're launching next month, actually, December the 15th, and, um, and this, is a, this has been a long journey of, of exploring what would be exciting to do in this space, and I think we've got something, but time, you know, when we launch, we'll know. But, uh, but where we are right now, I think you'll find over the weekend there's going to be news about this company that inspired me called Wave, uh, good friends, and you know, they're doing their next concert with Justin Bieber, and that's all over the press right now. Um, but I think I want to leave something with you. It's just like these companies didn't appear overnight, you know, and they've been around for a while. The people working there come from games, come from music. Yeah. They've been building on these ideas in a niche where everyone said this stuff will never happen. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, Beeple, everyone talks about that NFT drop. Beeple was an artist in the wave ages ago, you yeah, know, yeah. and it's just, we got to just keep an eye on this, the subcultures, where, where things are going at the subculture level. And I think that for me is the, the guiding light. It's just like, there's, if it's exciting as a subculture, at some point it will hit the mainstream. So, so maybe we're onto something. Maybe it'll be something cool. Maybe it'll flop. But there's lots of VR raves at the moment, which is kind of weird, but it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Just recently, Facebook announced it's renaming from Facebook to Meta. Uh, is this the way um, that you approach things? So, can you just explain, in your sense, what your companies, your projects have to do with uh, the metaverse? Is this direction you want to go? Is this? Can you? Elaborate what this is, what you, what your understanding of this is, because I think in in the media a lot of people uh, say a lot of different stuff, and uh, yeah, Frank. Um, so, what's Rare Space doing? Uh, when we started creating that project uh, one year ago, we already thought about that, uh, or we used that metaverse term, uh, term where nobody was know to, uh, what it is about. Um, besides, they uh, uh, read uh, so the science fiction one, uh, Snow Crash, but. Um, it's, it's kind of a buzzword um, at the moment, like blockchain and whatever, but for me the metaverse is uh, like a, a, a logical transformation from 2D web to 3D um, stuff. And it's not that metaverse, there are different companies that um, all build 3D stuff, and for me that all together is then the metaverse. Like, there's not one internet, there's not one company. I mean, when I, I've read um, uh, that I think two two months ago or three months ago, Facebook announced that they're gonna hire ten thousand people to to build that Meta thing, um, and probably um, they cre they can create something that's um, going to be like a, a big thing. I because I think because of the users still at the moment, Facebook is not in the best um, um, uh, uh, situation. Um, so I really appreciate all these um, nice uh, gifs I've seen about um, um, meth and meta and theta. <laughs> I don't know if you know these ones. <laughs> uh, they were all funny. But yeah, I mean, um, um, but anyway, it's going to be the future uh, somehow. Um, we are at the moment experimenting a lot um, with um, VR classes and how to deal with that and also mixed reality, all that kind of stuff. And um, if we like it or not, but that definitely will be the future. Um, and it's not only related to party, it's uh, related to everything uh, we're now using um, on a daily basis in the web. That's, that's my thought about it. Hmm. I was just, you, you know, I, I, do you follow like all this stuff going on in crypto and tokens, like the feeds on Twitter? There's, there's these new, there's a whole new language around it. Like, mm. like, if I say friends instead of saying friends, they spell it F R E N S because E N S is the Ethereum naming system. And then you've got like these things like W G M I. We're gonna make it. N G M I. Not gonna make it. And then I saw and I saw this thing like this picture of like N G M I. And it had like the logo of Netflix, N, Google, G, Meta, <laughs> and I Instagram. <laughs> it's just like this is where we're going with blockchain jokes. And uh, but um. I think, you know, when you look at uh, Facebook, I think it's you have to put it in context. Like, Facebook built an ad ecosystem that everyone relies on, and, and Zuckerberg's killing it now. And, and, if you, and we know that because we did some experiments with, uh, with, with shows as streams, and uh, we partnered with a, a, a startup that was just doing a festival, a charity festival. I was just curious what, what it would take, because they do uh, user acquisition, you know, um, uh, through, through Facebook and Instagram. And it was ridiculously expensive for them. Yeah. It was not. It was not worthwhile. And and this has been happening for a while. And I've spoken to people who work in some of the top game companies that do hypersocial games. And and it's it's very clear. Like 
the only people succeeding in this space are hacking Facebook system. They know how it well works, <laughs> and they find a way. No, not paying. They're finding a way to hack into the way okay. the algorithm works, and um, and they're paying through that. But they're getting the the best best stuff there. So anyone who talks about ad optimization, all this shit, is just like they don't know what they're talking about. It's like there's this is a real game of like hacking into the algorithms and understanding how it works. Now. That's owned by Facebook. They own it. Whether or not you want to agree with that, I don't know. But it's just <laughs> they're killing it, and they're going for this thing called the metaverse because they've had this plan. It was 2018, I think, at ADE when, it, when they were doing uh, some Instagram influences and talking about Spock AR and all the stuff they're creating there. And I spoke to – and they, they, they did a presentation there, their head of um, creative on the AR, and, and they were two years into a 10-year plan to create another layer for humanity. It's just, it's been, it's not new. The meta is not new. It's just, it's just that it's, it, the, the timing of it is amazing for startups like this. Because suddenly nothing we're doing is abstract anymore. Yeah. The metaverse to me is just something that's in our heads. You know, it's, it's always been the case that people escape online to escape this physical reality. And so from a, from a purely human perspective of, you know, how complicated life can be, uh, the online spaces, uh, this, the hanging out with your friends, the chat rooms you're in, the WhatsApp groups, they're, they're safe spaces where you can hang out. All these things, for me, are the metaverse. And um, it's just uh, Facebook owns a lot of those assets right now, and um, they can go all, on, all in on that. So... Th I'll finish, I'll finish there for now, because this would end up with a three-hour <laughs> conversation. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the experience. Because um, when you go to your club, like tonight, um, you go into the club, a lot of people are there, sweat, loud music, and when you are online, virtual show, you either go there with your glasses, virtual reality glasses, or you sit in front of your computer, or you have like on your phone, if it's a browser-based uh, system. So how do, you, how do you catch up on that? I mean, to replace, or do, yep. first off, do, do you want to replace it, or how do you can add on that, or yeah. can you combine that? What's your take on that? I mean, <clears throat> that's what everybody was asking me. Yeah, what will you do with your, with your company or with this uh, platform when the pandemic is over? And my answer is, um, it's not particularly uh, uh, related to a pandemic uh, situation because it's um, borderless, um, people from all over the world can join, and basically we could um, like do anything in the club. Um, our first approach was to kind of... Um, uh, build um, um, a Berlinish club, but of course we could do, that's, that's the beauty of it, we, could, we are not limited to something, right? We could do it, um, we can transform it to whatever. So this is one advantage, it's borderless, there's uh, people from all over the world can join. And also, why not in the future um, throwing um, a, a party and at the same time um, transfer the same party um, in, as, uh, as a virtual party? So. Um, it's not about replacement. It's not a, uh, so we had so many um, uh, communications with also people from the scene in Berlin, and there are those they um, understood it and said, "Hey, that's something. That's the future, kind of." And those who say, "Hey, um, we just want to, you know, we just want to stick with our environment and don't see it." Um, I think, um, the, as as I stated. Um, in the beginning, I think the hybrid is something that uh, yeah, will be happening in the future. And it's not about replacement, it's about to, to open the door to something new or to, and also to everybody. Mm -hmm. Because it's not possible for, for everybody to fly into Berlin and go to, uh, to Berghain or whatever. Um, and <laughs> yeah, especially not to Berghain. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, yeah. So, um, are there any models or tests with clubs in Berlin where you tried that with them? Are there like any, any, any like pilot projects that, that you're working on that you can maybe share or share the process in, in, in which direction they go and, and how, how the scene takes that? Callum? Yeah, um, you know, you can't, uh, just on that point of the live show, live is amazing, you know, you can't kill that. <laughs> it's just, it's just, uh, the, that's just the reality. I think, I think, you know, where a lot of the startups in the space are going, is just like, us included, it's just like, what can you do online that's interesting? And also, 
for me personally, when we started this, was we wanted to surface the Berlin club culture. It's like it's such this this mysterious thing that happens in Berlin that everyone talks about that you can't really experience. So we thought, can we create something online that gives you a taste of it and and make it really fun to participate in this show? And uh, and and we we uh, so my business partner Rainia Rainia Kempf, the artist portrait So at the early stages of this, we were. Um, we're experimenting with her shows, like how could we create in immersive live streams? And, and she started to use some Google AI to do face tracking and then uh, generate fluid visuals inside the screen as you're watching the live stream. And that became the foundation of what we've built now, which is there's, when you join our shows, you don't need to put on a headset, you just go in front of your computer and um, there's, a, there's a downloadable, an executable file that you have to download. But, but you're basically pulled into this uh, space, you're in this virtual space as an avatar, and you can see your avatar, and when you move, it triggers effects. So that movement, uh, the idea of capturing a person's movement and, and having that relate to what they're doing, the space is at the foundation of what we're doing. And so, so when it comes to uh, how can we expand this beyond just something you can watch in your laptop to something you can watch in your living room? We're thinking about, okay, what, could, what if we could bring this to, to uh, clubs, physical spaces? You know, we create these immersive visuals, like really stunning stuff. Some amazing artists have worked on this. And, 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 and when, you, when you come to the studio, I was there with our, our first session, I just thought, this is crazy. We've basically got, got a new kind of nightclub here where we're, we've got people joining online. We've got people dancing around us. And everyone's in the zone with the music because everything's live, you know. The, the artists are performing. It's re the bass is thumping. People are jumping around. People are getting drunk as well. And we're watching the equipment. <laughs> but, but at the same time, you've got these stunning visuals. And so we started looking at 360 spaces, 270 spaces, 270 degree spaces. How can we get these visuals in there? Then we thought, OK, what if we could just do the performance in there and then beam it out? And then we have an online audience joining at the same time as a physical audience, which is crazy, <laughs> and, I, and, and apparently it's technically possible, but I think what, what may be easy to do and where a lot of, a lot of startups in this space will go is, is you'd look at spaces like uh, Altamunza, for example, with the 270 degree, you look at maybe um, even the Koenig Gallery like with their visual setup, mm. spaces that have got this kind of setup to project your visuals into that space when you're doing a live show online and have an audience in there at the same time. That could be one type of hybrid show. Another type of hybrid show could be to basically do the broadcast from such spaces. Um, and uh, so I think there's, there's, there's one thing, like the live experience is amazing. You cannot fuck with that. And uh, the second thing is, am I allowed to use such words? Anyway, the second thing is, the second thing is, is um, um, if you want to create a great experience merging the two worlds, I think what's great about the, the virtual stuff is the, the type of visuals you can, you can develop in different game engines, whether it's web VR game engines or it's uh, Unreal. I mean, with Unreal and Unity, you'd get a, a really full immersion. Uh, and if you can link that, if you can link those two audiences together. So our thing is just how do we capture the energy from any input, whether it's movement, whether it's your phone, whether it's your watch, whether it's, uh, it's something that you're doing at home. I don't know. We're just thinking of all these different inputs to feed into the virtual space and like create this sense of like something is happening there. So the DJs see like the audience is joining. They see the energy building up around them. The people joining the show realize they can trigger effects by moving more or they can unlock an entirely new stage inside the space. And this kind of magical thing is what we're aiming for. This, ma this feeling when you're in there going, oh my God, I'm about to unlock something. What can it be? And, and um, oh, you're showing the, the clips in the back, yeah. So we're, we're experimenting with that layer and then we're thinking about, okay, if we do these streams on, on live streams like Twitch, can we use their systems to then get data points that could then feed into what we're doing? And, and that's the idea. It's just building on this one thing, which is like we can capture the movement in front of the camera. What else can we do to capture what people are doing and then bring it into the space as an abstract representation of energy that is building up during a live show? And that energy is what you feel when you're in a, in a space anyways, physically. When you, when you lose it and you're in a club, you're, you're getting connected to everything in there. And that's what we're trying to create. So um, now, can I, can I also yeah, ask absolutely. a question? Um, for, I would like to uh, give a live demo of our system. Yeah. So just um, a quick one. Can you? So our system, you, need, need, uh, you don't need to download anything because it's browser-based. It's easy accessible. 
you just go to the website, um, but this is just a, a demo link now, but it's, it's, really, it's really online now, right? I'm just literally online live in the browser, and then you can create your own, your, uh, own profile, <coughs> and then you are in, normally. <laughs> Okay. Oh, it's super dark. Can we can we lower this one? Is it that possible, kind of? Because of it's a super uh, dark experience, as we all know from clubs. Yeah, just. Uh, okay, uh, let me open my phone, my virtual phone, and. Yeah, okay, it's, it's super dark, but imagine you are in a dark room, have your headset on, and the beauty of this experience is you can basically walk around, right? So um, this is outside in the yard, and um, this is the bouncer. <laughs> Let's see if we can get in. Okay, there you go. Hi, welcome, come on in. Okay, so, and then, and the beauty is, if anybody of you now has his computer and had the same link, I would see you, right? So we uh, would see each other, we can communicate, we have a voice chat, we can walk around, dance together, um, and it would be cool um, to have another laptop now. Uh, yeah, let's go into it. Super dark. Hmm. Ah, I, I even cannot. Yeah. Okay. But you catch the vibe, right? So, um, and the funny thing is, there are a lot of kind of in-game um, things um, you would normally also do in a club. For example, these stickers. I don't know if you see those stickers. Um, these are not tagged by us. These are tagged by guests. So what you can do is you can upload your own sticker or tag or whatever and you can stick it on the wall and it's going to be in the club like um, hopefully forever. <laughs> so, but also, let's uh, just give a little bit exploration of the club. Not going, I don't want to overdo it, but let's check out the toilet area. It's also... Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, we also thought what could be interesting. Uh, <laughs> that's the pea golem, I guess. Um, okay, so yeah, it's very Berlinish. Uh, we also have some funny. Uh, we have a cooperation with Einhorn, so you can uh, get some vegan condoms here, which is mandatory, I guess. Um, <laughs> let's see what else is going on. Hmm. Oh, that's probably it. <laughs> Safe space, right? So, no, I mean, um, the, it's and uh, these players you see, these are NPCs, um, that means um, they are scripted but um, dynamic. But um, it's going to be fun when like 200 people at the same time are in the club. And it's so funny because it was also an experiment for us. What would happen? And the funny thing is, the same shit happens like in a real club. You get lost and you're like, where are the others? Oh, they are at the bar. Oh no, the others are at the dance floor. And, and, it's, and, and this vibe, which also happens in a club, um, totally um, like instantly um, appears. And I've had so many interesting conversations with people from all over the world. Even um, we throw the parties at nine in the evening and it's, it's one o'clock in LA. They, people are like um, in the sunshine and uh, in a darkish <laughs> Berlin club and uh, raving together, having interesting conversations and all that kind of stuff. And just to um, show you something else, uh, because just one thing, because we talked also about NFTs, there's also a dark room, check it out by yourself. But um, you can, for example, go to the bar and have some um, drinks. Um, probably you can also get other stuff in the toilet area, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> beside vegan condoms. Um, 
Yeah, so what happened now, uh, you see this uh, yellow bar, and um, as long this this is active, you, uh, your whole experience gets uh, dizzy and... So every um, the, uh, the stuff you get um, also changes the experience, which keep you going, right? And um, <laughs> you know. yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, it's wild now. Okay, so um, and also because and that's what Callum mentioned, but that we realized that um, this. Everything melts together, the crypto space, the uh, people into art, uh, the, 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 the culture, the subculture. Um, we thought, hey, why not um, extend... Sorry, I'm still... Um, still... Uh, still wasted, sorry. Um, so we thought, why not um, combining these spaces, right? And we built this gallery. <laughs> Shit, I shouldn't got that drink. Um, <laughs> So um, this is the gallery space, which is accessible at any time, right? So um, 24 hours a day, you can go to our website and enter the gallery and see um, NFT art we display there. And uh, during club times, we open the door and they can, can go to the club in addition. So what we have done, we approach the different artists and say, hey, would you be up to um, create an avatar? And um, we, we um, display, exhibit it as an NFT. So we, for example, collaborated with DJ Hell there he is. <laughs> and um, yeah, okay, so it's just, it's over now. Oh, okay, so that's the gallery space. And um, yeah, we, we, we displayed NFTs here. And again, if, if you would be in this space as well, we could, um, it, it doesn't matter where you are, we could um, ex explore art together, have a conversation about that. Like, oh, this is nice, probably. But uh, however, that's, um, so it's, it's way more than, uh, than just um, to uh, recreate some, some club experience. And yeah, um, just, and also one last thing, um, which I as a guest always uh, missed in a club, we have um, a cooperation with Sequence. Um, it's not working at the moment because we are not connected um, with their network, but yeah, in the phone, you would see actually what the DJ is playing at any time. Um, because uh, probably you know that, you're in the club and say, what the fucking hell is this tune? And you don't want to go up and say, can you tell me what? And uh, you would see it there. And um, also, uh, by the way, in your virtual phone, you, you see who else is in the club. You can join, you can do private um, talk. Um, but also, of course, you have a chat, hi, hi, hi. And so on and so on. So, um, yeah. That's that's how that's our approach. Very interesting. Very nice that, that you're able to. <laughs> to Thanks. To <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No. Uh, do you have a question right now? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. I just uh, actually wanted to. <laughs> I would I would ask questions in the uh, I would do questions uh, in the end. <laughs> if, if that's uh, fine. So um, now moving into uh, <laughs> into um, yeah uncertain times again. Um, do you are, are you collaborating? Like, th this was like, a, a club you created or your team created. Yeah. Are you um, working together with clubs in Berlin actually on recreating that space in a digi digital landscape to make such experiences possible for people to experience? We don't know where we're moving, but. Yeah, just a quick answer for myself. Go for it. Okay. Are you asking me? No, yeah, I, was, yeah, I, was, I was looking no, no. at him. Uh, we, we are already <laughs> in, in conversation with several, but it's not like agreed. But so um, you can't just claim. Even, even more interesting thing for me is um, I used to uh, be in, I've been, because I'm a drum and bass guy, I've been uh, very often at uh, Roses, which was one of my favorite clubs, and I know the owner very well. And um, we are now in the state of um, recreating that space. And imagine, um, or recreating the Blue Note in London, or whatever club that's not existing anymore. And imagine we would also get those people um, um, to, to, to perform, so we could recreate um, something which um, people thought it's, it's never been possible to bring back. 
And um, yeah, let's see how that goes. I mean, that's, that's uh, also that's a use case, which is, um, yeah, which I think is super nice. So I'm, lo I'm super looking forward to the next trauma based party at Roses. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Uh, so. So now you had this, uh, this demo of this virtual club and uh, Inex Space is, I mean, where does it really differ? Where do you separate yourself or where do you yourself working together on, on, on like a combined product or like where is, is your relationship between yeah. those products? I really see just a, a full spectrum of experiences. You know, there's, there's the, the kind of stuff Frank's team is doing is, is really interesting because you can have a persistent space where People hang out, and you can do uh, you can do art showcases in there. You can introduce new artists to this medium. It's 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 a there's a there's a lower threshold, you know, for building yeah. out yeah. the shows, and it's 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 quite exciting. And and then within that spectrum, you've got also some festivals I've seen built on WebGL and WebVR, and and they're it's really interesting. Also, when you when you go beyond the um, the the linear approach to recreating. A club, and then imagine what uh, an entire universe can look like, where you have a festival, and and uh, and then the design choice around that. So there's something called the Secret Sky Festival. That's actually something that inspired me quite early on in this process as well. That the, the the team there, it's more of an LA scene, but but there um, they had a, a virtual festival in the middle of the pandemic, and then they did a second one more more recently, and they really show you what's possible with with these new tech stacks around web VR. Uh, so you go into this, like a, it's like a festival field, and, and you have everyone looks like this really cute little like uh, anime creature in the space. But but it's uh, you know when you design avatars, there's all this. I I really have to catch my team sometimes because it's like everyone just goes for this very uniform male-looking avatar, and it's just like. You know, people look different, and identity online is a big deal. You know, yeah, the top-selling NFTs are avatars, and yeah. um, and 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 particularly in the in the in the Berlin uh, tech and culture scene, you know, identity is a very big topic, and um, and so I think there's there's still a gap in terms of how um, things that are being created in this space are reflecting well the subcultures from which where this stuff comes from. And um, so, so there's a design aesthetic, but I think there's there's some a lot of stuff to be to be explored in in this area. And and the way I see collaborations working is more like, you know, we're working at the high end. We have big budgets. We have uh, artists that that ne that need to recoup that cost. We have to think very carefully about how we monetize this. And but at the same time, there's a whole bunch of experiences before that and after that, or in between that, where this kind of stuff makes sense because you're experiencing it from one of these devices. So. Um, totally agreed. So, so, so there's that, and and then um, in terms of how we differ, you know, what we're working on is this thing that I keep calling energy exchange. What what that means is, it's all live. Nothing is pre-rendered. Nothing is pre-built. Nothing is pre-recorded. We started out with DJs who are frustrated with going into a green screen room at eight in the morning to record something over coffee and watch it two weeks later. So <laughs> this is where the this is the output at the end of it. It's like we're creating something that, that makes them ex gets them excited to Why perform. Why that didn't in do Ed in the evening? Yeah, <laughs> well, that's the thing. You got to ask the production studios. <laughs> but it's uh, but the point is that um, the the feeling. If you play in front of hundreds of thousands of people in a live event and they chuck things at you, there are eye contact moments. There's the adjusting your music to that, C creating that experience in an online setting. You need to really just think about what. First of all, they got to see an audience. They got to be able, be able to see what's with this audience joining. They got to be able to see that what they're doing in the show is getting that audience to, to is triggering that audience, making them do stuff in the space. And and so when when the DJs are performing, they see you. You came to our demo. They see a virtual audience like right. dancing. And and when people join, these avatars light up. And then you see as they move, the energy flows through the space. And then these things build up. The stage changes. So uh, designing all of that. Was just coming from concepts to to prototypes to making it happen. We've got a base layer of how we think this stuff works, but it's only that moment when you do it and and the performers go, "Holy shit, that was amazing!" Yeah. <laughs> you know, then then you realize you got it, and then you got to figure this out for the other side, for the audience coming in on the laptop. Can we create that? Holy shit, this was an amazing moment for them too, and. Um, and I think when we did the demos, one of the key moments, that one of the key things we tested last time was this meet and greet function where 
literally at one point your energy builds up and you unlock this thing where you start to fly to the stage and then you land on the stage as an avatar and, and you're just seeing this in the virtual space like every, avatars flying off and then landing on the stage and then, and then, but what you're experiencing from the app is you see suddenly a, a camera view opens up, you see the DJs and they see you and you wave and it's just like at that moment when that happened the first time and no one realized what was happening it was pure magic everyone was like holy shit what was that that's crazy because they could both see each other and i think these things are so uh, it's it's really hard to quantify what that is but you yeah. know what it feels like and and that's the kind of thing we're 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 aiming for so so i think it's um to summarize there's a spectrum of experiences you can develop online we're going right at the far end of the weirdness. Like, how can we create something that actually makes people, gets people excited, you know, makes them re remember having a good time. And maybe it's a story they tell their friends the next day. That's, that's, the, that's the direction. So, I, I'm really excited about that. So, uh, <laughs> the, the, the just to, to add on, I've been uh, um, there, and I have to um, admit that's absolutely um, the way he describes. And um, I remember that I've been dancing crazily um, in front of that um, computer with a camera. I was totally into it, and you need to go crazy to, to reach that moment he described. And um, my co-founder was also there, and we, we start totally dancing crazily, and like, okay, this now we're almost there, and then ah, and so and we felt we had them on Halloween filters, so their faces were like <laughs> these, these pumpkins <laughs> as well. So, so it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, um, yeah. So like, oh, and I really like that that you both uh, develop on like a, a product that is like for for somebody who who hasn't been in the space yet. So, seems quite similar and yet that you both really enjoy the company and work like besides on on, on reaching uh, like a, a point where virtual parties can be um, accessible for people who like to go into clubs in real life and when it's not possible or when they say all right I just want to join for 30 minutes and it's not worth uh, go, going going like an hour uh, public transport and then waiting in line and then going into the club and so probably if you don't get in if the bouncer doesn't <laughs> yeah that, that, that as well so I think there's an important point to, to to state around this kind of stuff there there is a reason why I, I strongly believe in collaboration in this space because uh, first of all it's it's a it's a culture you know it's a subculture there's there's a clubbing scene there are people who are skeptical about online and there there's and we're in berlin at the the, the, the the epicenter of all this stuff so so i really believe it's 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 very important to to bring in diverse viewpoints uh but at the same time to yeah. also not build in a silo uh because you're you're probably wrong in your head with a lot of assumptions you have you know you got to yeah. check this with the real world but yeah. the other side is factually anyone building in this space whether it's us whether it's Rave, whether it's The Wave, or Sensorium, another startup, um, and, um, or Roblox for that matter, the ones, the companies that have been successful are the ones that figured out how to collaborate. Because a lot of money goes into building this, this kind of shows and these kinds of visuals, whether it's at the level of WebGL or whether it's the level of Unreal, it's, it's a lot of time and, and money and investment. And it's very easy to get lost in the technology. Uh -huh. and, and there's this long history of companies creating uh, online spaces, virtual spaces, and failing uh, because they were too siloed. And, and so for me, it's very important that we, we don't make those same mistakes again.